Bendix in Meet Artie Greengroy on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. It's time to clean out the cooling system of your car and get it ready for summer driving. To do that job right, first, drain out the antifreeze. Then clean out the rust and scum with DuPont Cooling System Cleanser. It dissolves rust chemically and cleans thoroughly without harming the hose or metal parts. Third, fill the radiator with fresh water and add DuPont Acid and Rust Inhibitor. That will keep the radiator free from rust all season. And fourth, add DuPont Cooling System Sealer to prevent leaks in the radiator and hose connections. It will not take long to do this, but it will help you avoid overheating and sluggish engine performance. Your summer driving will be far more pleasant because of these DuPont radiator products. Examples of better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents William Bendix in Meet Artie Greengroin on the Cavalcade of America. My name is Artie Greengroin, Private First Class. I was dreamed up by an old rummy named Harry Brown. He told all about me in Yank, the Army Weekly, and pretty soon a million GIs were sticking their nose in my private affairs. Stick around, you old rummies. I'll be back later. This is the story of Private First Class Artie Greengroin. Artie never lived, but his roots went deep, and the GIs in the European Theater of Operations understood him and approved. For those million who knew him, we bring back an old friend. And for those who didn't know him, we say, meet Artie Greengroin, private vice class. Hey, Greengroin. Oh, oh, hiya, Charlie, you rummy. Hiya, Greengroin. How's every little thing, huh? Terrible. Uh, what's the matter? Don't you like England? Uh, it's all right, I guess, but the English, they don't know any better. <laughs> me, I wish I was back in Brooklyn. Yeah, me too. Yeah, come on, Charlie, old boy. I got to stop in a supply sergeant. All right. Hiya, Sarge, you're Remy. Well, 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 private vice class green coin, I presume. Yeah, Sergeant, I got a pair of old prone pants here. Uh-huh, and you plan to turn them in for a new pair, right? Right. Nothing doing. <laughs> what do you mean, nothing doing? Always you rummies are coming here, you want something big. You don't want a pair of socks. You don't want a handkerchief. No. It's always something big. Greedy. That's what you are. Let me see them pants. Here. Yeah. Hmm. These pants is torn. Well, that's what I said. And not only is they torn, but they got spots on them. Millions of spots. You're a dirty thing, Green Groin. <laughs> well, that's beside the purse. And this is a dirty army. I don't want them pants, Green Groin. Take them away. Burn them. But I need a new pair of pants. I got a date. You don't want to see me a sloppy soldier, do you? I just don't want to see you, Green Groin, period. <laughs> besides, them pants is torn. I come by that torn honestly, Sarge. I was saving somebody's life. <laughs> Saving somebody's life? Yeah. What's the matter, you crazy? What's the idea of saving somebody's life with your best uniform? But, sir... Come on, beat it, beat it, beat it. Just trying to milk the government. <laughs> okay. But denying me a pair of pants when I got a date is the height of patria familia et demonstratum. Which is French for you, lousing me up. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Uh, Artie, what's, uh, what's all this about a date? Charlie, she's my dream girl. I'm a lost soul. That's what I am. Gee, Artie, I ain't ever seen you look like this before. Not even in Brooklyn. Charlie, old pal, you ought to see them eyes she's got. Yeah? They're blinding. Mind you, I ain't saying she's perfect. No, not entirely. She don't speak English too good. Uh, more the way them English speak it. But she'll learn, Charlie. Yeah, Artie? I'm gonna marry Gwendolyn. Y- you are? Yeah. I-, I thought you was in love with this here uh, English dame. Well, that's it. That's her name, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn Fortescue. Gwendolyn? Yeah. Oh. Come on in the orderly room. I got business here. Sit down, Charlie. Uh, where, where's the top? I don't know. And further and more, I don't care. In exactly six minutes, Gwendolyn is going to give me a phone on this phone and tell me where we're going to meet tonight. Yeah, and in exactly one minute, the top sergeant is coming in here and kick you off his desk. Don't talk to me about this guy, Glump. You know him, Charlie? Oh, I heard of him. He's tough, huh? He's beneath me contempt. That's what he is. One of these days, I'll fix him, the rummy. Who is this you're going to fix, Green Green? Oh, well, hello there, Sarge, old boy. <laughs> Sarge, uh, meet me pal from Brooklyn, Charlie Dwyer. Pleased to meet you, Sarge. It ain't mutual. 
Any friend of this crumb is no friend of mine. Green Green, get your crummy feet off of my desk. Get up off of that chair. Get your whole crummy carcass out of this here office. Now, Sarge, is that a way to talk to one of your own non-cums? If you want to pass for the night, forget it. Tonight, everybody has got to stay in and shine their buttons. Kind of low crack, so it is. Oh, no, Sarge. Oh, yes, Green Green, you rummy. Look, Sarge, there's a girl going to call me on your telephone. Oh. Oh, a doll, huh? Yeah. Well, of course, now that's different. <laughs> Never let it be said that I stood in the way of true love. Eh, uh, what's she like, Green Green? Old man? Sarge, old man. Sarge, she is divine. What eyes. And she comes in and goes out in all the most interesting places. <laughs> Don't say. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what, Green Grain, old man. I got me orders not to wish you no passes tonight because everybody's got to punish their buttons. But uh, that can be got around. Tell me how, Sarge, and I will be your slave. Well, let's see now. If you was to polish your buttons now... I get it, Sarge, I get then it. Then you'd have it done, and I could give you a pass for tonight. Sergeant, from this moment onward, I am your... But uh, what about my phone call? I'll take care of it for you. I'll find out the time and the place. Now, uh, run along like a little man. Sergeant, I have never understood you until now. Oh, green grain, old man, it's nothing. Go on now and polish your buttons. If an enemy bullet was to cut you up me career, this is what I would have carved on me tombstones. He was proud to be a non-com under Sergeant Glump. <laughs> Let's go, Charlie. Sergeant Glump speaking. Who? Uh, <laughs> Private first class green grain ain't here. And uh, who is this speaking, pray? Oh, Miss Fortescue, huh? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, he left a message. Uh, wait a minute, I'll read it to you. Uh, 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 dear Miss Fortescue, the wonderful man you are now speaking to is my best friend, Sergeant Harold Glump. Since I am unfortunately detained in the guardhouse, why do not you and him get together at some quiet little place? Yeah, yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> 830? Uh, uh, would you kindly repeat that address? Thank you. I will be there. Green Grain reporting, Captain. Very interesting. What are you reporting for? I'm reporting that I can't locate Sergeant Glump, sir. The sergeant's off duty tonight. Went up to London. Well, didn't he leave me no pass? Well, what about my message from Gwendolyn? Mm, I don't see anything. You can look on his desk if you like. Oh, much obliged, Captain. Hey, what's this? I, I mean, sir. What's what, Green Grain? What's Gwendolyn's address doing here? What's my girl's address doing on this rummy's desk? Well, now, I... Captain, you can throw me in a break. You can give me KP for the duration. But I gotta get to London tonight. I gotta save me fiancée from a fight worse than death. Is uh, she really your fiancée, Green Grind? Not only that, but we're engaged. <laughs> Very well, Green Grind. I'll give you a pass. Thank you, sir. Why, Mr. Green Grind? Yeah, it's me, Miss Fortescue. Audi Green Grind, PFC, and... Just in the nick of time, I'll bet. Oh, but I thought you were detained. I thought... Oh, come in, won't you? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm very well, thank you. I've got a surprise for you. Your best friend is here. Hiya, Green Green. He ain't my best friend, and it ain't no surprise. <laughs> I was just telling Gwenny here how you had to stay in tonight to polish your buttons. I was also telling her how a private face class can be put in the brig for life for going A-W-O-L. Why don't you ask to see my pass, you big elephant? I wouldn't think of it. Not when I'm off duty like this. You, uh, got one, I hope. I, uh, got one. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Glump has just been telling me about his medals. Uh, no, no, Gwenny, old girl. Oh, like... his medals, eh? Well, that's very interesting. Pray continue, Sergeant, dear. Yeah, it's getting kind of late. Maybe I... Come on, Sarge. Don't be so modest. Tell me and I'll tell all the other Joes at the base. Come on. I guess I better be going. 
Oh, you know, Mr. Blump was at Pearl Arbor when the Japs came over. Hey, he told me all about it. He brought down seven Jap planes. Uh, you don't say. <laughs> nice going, Gluppy, old boy. I must remember to tell that one to the boys. <laughs> I forgot just how we got the, uh, oh, the Congressional Medal of Honor uh, and the Navy Cross. <laughs> Mr. Glump got that, too, when he led a platoon of Marines at Wadow Canal. When was you there last, Sarge? Before the war? <laughs> the last I heard on a day at Pearl Harbor, you was delivering milk in Jersey City. <laughs> If he won them, I'll eat them. Dehydrated. <laughs> now, Miss Fortescue, I can explain. Please, don't bother, Mr. Glump. I'll thank you to leave this house at once. Bye-bye, Glumpy old pal. <laughs> Green Crane, I'll see you back at the base. Good night, Miss Fortescue. One moment, Mr. Glump. You'll kindly salute your superior officer. Huh? Now, 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 bunny old girl. That's that ain't necessary. That ain't... <laughs> I insist. Mr. Glump, you're a sergeant, aren't you? That's right. And Mr. Greenbrawn is a private first class. Now, Gwen, you don't. He is, so what? Then salute him. He's your superior officer, isn't he? <laughs> this way, my superior officer. <laughs> Did he tell you that? Sarge, old pal. On second thought, maybe I and you ought to leave. Wait, I'll leave you on my arm. Uh, <laughs> Miss Fortescue, that there's no good for me to tell you that he is my. He is my. Did he? Why, yes. He tells me that in the American Army, a private first class is right under a brigadier general. <laughs> Didn't you, Mr. Greenbrown? Well, maybe I was exaggerating a little. You too? Oh, my goodness. Isn't there anybody in the American Army a girl can trust? <laughs> but, Gwenny, you get... That is Miss Fortescue. I can explain everything. Private first class screen going. Okay, okay. I'm going. I know how to take a hint. Charlie, old pal, you're looking at a man with one foot in a guardhouse. Yeah. What you gonna do, Artie? I'm gonna get even with Sergeant Club. Yeah? On account of him, I ain't got no more fiancé. Revenge, that's what me soul cries out for. You, you, you mean Gwendolyn? I mean Gwendolyn. She... Give me the bum's rush, Charlie. Oh, what you gonna do, Artie? Well, I done a little detective work, see? Huh? I found out that every night from 10.30 to 11, Top Sergeant Crump is in the orderly room doing some work. And during that time, the secret files is left open. Artie! Artie, you ain't gonna sell our plans to the enemy. What enemy? I've been in the Army two years. I've never even seen an enemy. <laughs> Now, at 11 o'clock every night, the captain goes into the orderly room to check up. Yeah? 10.30 to 11. That's the witching hour. That's when I'm going to do me dirty deed. Tonight, green groin rides again. You are listening to William Bendix in Meet Arnie Green Groin on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our second act opens, Sergeant Glump is alone in the orderly room. It is 10.45 at night. The company street is dark and deserted. The setting is perfect for our hero, Artie Greengroin's insidious plot. Suddenly, a wild yelling disturbs the stillness. Yo! He's running around in the dark. Now I just sneak in. Ah, here we are. Got to wait quick now. Where's them files? Ah, here. Mm, confidential. No good. Secret. No good. Ah, here we are. Top secret. That's their stuff. All over the floor. All over the table. Chuck some outside the door. That's fine. That'll fix him. <laughs> wait a minute. Where's all the paper? Paper, yeah. Oh, here it is. Now, what'll I write? I know. 
Colonel O'Crock is a stinker, first class. Oh. Sign Sergeant Crump. That'll fix him, the rummy. Oh, somebody's coming. I gotta beat it now. Here I go. Out through the window. This way, Colonel. My word, Captain. Is this how you keep your secret orders all over the floor? Well, I, I, I usually keep them in a file, sir. They're not in a file now, Captain. <laughs> Come to think of it, they're not, sir. I wonder who... Hey, what's this, sir? Where's that sergeant? What's that piece of paper you're trying to hide, Captain? Uh, what piece of paper, sir? Captain Dingle, give me that paper. Yes, sir. Hmm. Colonel O'Croft is a stinker, first class. <laughs> what? Where's that first sergeant? Here I am, sir. Place yes. yourself under arrest, Sergeant Bluff. Oh, but, but, Colonel, sir, I didn't. Solitary confinement. But, Colonel, sir. Loss of rank. No, oh, no. From this moment on, Sergeant Lump. You are one strike below a private first class. Oh, no, not that. Not that. Oh, no. But, Sergeant Gump, I don't understand. Now, listen, Sidney. You owe me 206 bucks from that crap game, don't you? Yeah, I'll but... cancel it. I'll call it even. All I want is you should get Green Grain up in an aeroplane. But why? Because he gets seasick in aeroplanes, that's why. And when you're seasick, you're miserable. And Mr. Green Grain's misery is all I'm living for. <laughs> Shh, here he comes. Get away from my window so we don't know you're talking about. Hey, Green Groin. Green Groin. Well, if it ain't my old aviator pal, Sidney. Uh, tell me, how is the air corps? Oh, not bad, not bad. <laughs> I, uh, got me another cluster. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The Air Corps gets all the medals and we does all the fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Artie. We do have it kind of easy in MB-17. Uh, you can say that again. Yeah. How'd you like to come up with us sometime, Artie? Any old time, any old time at all. That's fine, let's go. Uh, you, you, you mean now? Yeah, yeah. Our tail gunner's sick. Oh, but I... I'll fix it up with the captain. But do I Meet me in the airfield in 15 minutes, so uh... long. Hmm. Well, I guess I let myself in for something. Oh, I've got to make the best of it. You're a green groin, green groin. Always remember that. Where's that Sydney? Oh, there he is, behind that plane. Hmm, that must be his pilot he's talking to. I'd better wait here till he's through. Yeah, his name is Green Groin, Captain, and he's the number one screwball in the entire army. Well, why do you want to take him up? Well, it's a gag, Captain. I want to scare the pants off him to oblige a friend. What friend? His name is Sergeant Glump. Well, of all the low-down, dirty, double-dealing... It's uh, just a routine flight, ain't it, Captain? We won't run into anything. Oh, no, not a chance. Hasn't been an enemy plane where we're going in six weeks. You know, it's against regulations, Sidney. Yes, I know that, sir. Uh, but uh, this green groin doesn't think much of the Air Corps, Captain. Oh, he doesn't? No, sir. He says the Air Corps gets all the medals for doing absolutely nothing. Oh, he does, uh -huh. huh? <laughs> well, Sidney, my compliments to your friend, Mr. Green Groin. Ask him if he'd like to go for a little ride. Oh, gee, thanks, Captain. Believe me, this is going to be one ride that Rummy will never forget. <laughs> it is, huh? That's what you think, Sidney, old boy. That's what you think. <laughs> so, uh, this is what you Air Corps heroes does, eh? Oh, my, my. Sidney, my man, just wake me up when something important happens. Until then, I do not wish to be disturbed. Dirty double crossing. I'll show them. Scare the pants off me, will they? Coming in at 10 o'clock. Two Messerschmitts. Green coin. Uh, yes, Sidney, dear. Did you hear the captain? Two Messerschmitts. Coming in at 10 o'clock. Oh, is that so? Well, the captain's watch must be slow. It is half past 11. <laughs> Four more at 6 o'clock. Four more at 6 o'clock. Green groin, get that gun going. Green groin, do you hear me? I hear you, Sidney. Not only that, but it happens I overhear you tell the captain that you was going to try to scare the pants off of me. Yeah, but this is no gag. This is a real thing. Well, Sidney, old horse, it don't work. You see, I'm a hundred percent nonchalant. That's what I am. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Hey, 
Hey, uh, what's them big round holes in front of me? Just uh, take a look out the window and find out. Oh. Okay, Sidney, anything to oblige. I don't want to... There's nothing out there but some planes with swastikas all over them. Nothing to get... <laughs> swastikas! Oh! Hey, Chippy, what's that? What happened back there? It's green growing, Captain. He just fainted. Hey, please, Greg, you rummy. Wait a minute, you... Where do you think you're going? Oh, I got my orders, Sergeant Clump. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's the idea of them combat boots in the car bike? Well, I told you, I'm going over. The invasion, you know. Invasion? Yeah. Well, you rummy, this is D-Day plus 108. Well, just the same. I'm crossing the channel into France, and where green coin goes, there's war. <laughs> this would happen to me. Just when I get out of the guardhouse, they thwarts my revenge on you. Revenge? After I fixes you up with Gwendolyn. What, Gwendolyn? You been seeing her? But only last night I seen her. I told her I was off the battle. She broke down and cried, but I consoled her. I told her you was getting out of the clink and that she wasn't a bad Joe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You done that? Yeah. Honest? Yeah. And she wants you to come up to her apartment tonight. Oh, yeah. D don't ring the bell. Just walk in like I always did. Oh, great <laughs> boy. <laughs> I had you so wrong. Uh, 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 what time do I show up there? Oh, yeah, 10 o'clock. 10 on a dot. Uh -huh. Well, so long, Rummy. I got to keep a date with Lafayette. So long, Gotti. I'll never forget what you've done for me. No. <laughs> no, I guess you never will. So long, Clump. <laughs> I wonder if I should have told him Gwendolyn married Colonel O'Croc this morning. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, I guess I'll wait and phone him at the hospital. <laughs> William Bendix will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gain Whitman. Today, in New York City, the plastics industry opens its first comprehensive show, gathering together for the first time all of the thousands of old and new uses of plastics that represent such an important contribution to modern living. The DuPont Company is introducing at this exhibition an even half-dozen developments in plastic materials with new and different properties not available before in commercial plastics. These are all new developments, additions to the half-dozen outstanding plastics, including nylon, polythene, and lucite acrylic resin, which DuPont now manufactures. They are Teflon, tetrafluoroethylene, a unique industrial plastic that withstands all acids, including those which dissolve gold and platinum, and retains its form and strength at higher temperatures than any known organic material. Also, it is an excellent electrical insulator. Foamy CCA, cellular cellulose acetate, holds out great promise as a lightweight material for use in making strong laminates with other materials. Lighter even than cork, it insulates against heat and sound and is expected to find wide application in luggage, airplane, and refrigerator construction. DuPont BCM resin. Glass fabric and other materials impregnated with this new resin form structural panels so strong they are undergoing testing for automobiles, airplanes, refrigerators, and washing machines. Embossed nylon plastic sheeting, which because of extreme toughness is expected to provide outstanding durability in upholstery, wallets, briefcases, handbags, and wall paneling. Luminescent DuPont Lucite acrylic resin compounded with fluorescent pigments that glow under ultraviolet light or with phosphorescent pigments that glow after exposure to ordinary light and lucite in frosted, pebbled, and other patterns. So many plastic developments from the chemical laboratories of the DuPont Company illustrate the phenomenal growth of the plastics industry, which, beginning with one material about 75 years ago, now offers designers, manufacturers, and builders dozens of materials from which to choose. 
It must be remembered, of course, that several of these DuPont plastics are so new that they can be purchased only in very small quantity for experimentation at the present time. Others, although they are out of the laboratory, will not be in production for many months. But all of them are exciting contributions to a better future. Interesting examples, new examples of DuPont, better things for better living through chemistry. Nice going, Kane. And because it was such a good job, here's a ticket to my radio show, The Life of Riley, that I do every Saturday night for Teal. Why, thank you, Bill. Yeah, and here's a ticket to the Paramount picture, The Blue Dahlia, in which I am currently being seen. Thank you. Now then, uh, have you got anything for me, like a ticket, maybe? Huh? No, but I've got a good tip, Bill. Listen to Cavalcade next week. Oh, but I always listen to Cavalcade, again. Oh, wait, I haven't finished. Tune in Cavalcade and hear a fine story called Thirst Without End. An interesting story about that wonderful organization, Alcoholics Anonymous, starring James Cagney. Well, well, with Jimmy Cagney in it, I just got to have a ticket. All I want is a ticket. Hey, green cry, you rummy. Well, Sergeant Club, I ain't seen you since we was in the army together. Uh, what are you doing in that policeman's uniform? Since I am now a civilian, I am now a cop. And since you parked your crummy automobile in front of a fire hydrant... Here is a ticket. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Bendix, you rummy. It's a losing fight. Good night, folks. Daylight saving time goes into effect in certain areas on April 28th. This may change the time when Cavalcade is heard in your community. Please check your local newspaper for the time Cavalcade can be heard next week. Music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our play was written by Arthur Arendt and was based on the book Artie Green Drawing PFC by Harry Brown. In tonight's cast, John Brown played Sergeant Glump, Paula Winslow was Gwendolyn, and Sidney Miller was Charlie. Others included Jerry Hausner, Eddie Marr, Francis X. Bushman, William Johnstone, Howard McNair, and Peter Leeds. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Thirst Without End, starring James Cagney on The Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.